morning. Um, this head wrap isn't that good, I know, but I bought this at H&M. And I love head wraps. I'm going to get more of this because now I have a pretty head and I will no longer be ugly. <laughs> okay, I wanted to make a video real quick about Shea Moisture and the appropriation of black culture in retail. I hope everyone is having a good morning, first of all, or if you're five hours away, if you are in New Orleans, if you are in Atlanta, if you are in the Bahamas, Jamaica, all my diaspora, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are and whatever time it is. But let's get into Shea Moisture briefly. As you guys may know, I'm not big on Shea Moisture because I have 4C hair. I think I did a video a long time ago about how I felt as if Shea Moisture did not really accommodate the type of hair that I have. I used it about one time. That was literally last year, probably in the spring of now, like like a year a year ago. And I heard a lot of people talking about Shea Moisture and saying it is literally the holy grail of natural hair. So naturally, when it comes to natural hair products, I am someone that likes to try things new. I guess you can call me a product junkie. I follow a lot of girls on Instagram who promote this Novex Care. And I may try that if anyone with 4C hair or maybe 3C to about 4C hair have tried Novex Care. Is it good? Does it really work for all hair types like like it said like I asked one person and they say yeah it works for all hair types I think it'll do pretty well for afro hair so I just want to have healthy hair I don't really care what type of hair texture someone has that's promoting a product if they are saying it does wonders for your hair in terms of health then that's what I'm going to go for but Shea Moisture to me seemed a little bit expensive. I remember seeing it at the Walgreens in the college town that I used to go to school at and thinking like, I don't want to spend $9 on some curl souffle. So instead I would get the Old Natural, which I think Old Natural, is it the like creme, the anti-shrinkage cream, I think does better for my hair than Shea Moisture. And then any Eden Body Works, I think, is amazing. I don't buy it too often because, again, it's a little bit expensive, but I think it's worth the money. But Shea Moisture, to me, just didn't really seem like it was for me or that it was targeted for girls like me. But when I tried it, I remember thinking how waxy it was. I didn't really like the texture. And I understand there's different types of Shea Moisture products. And what I used was a curl souffle. So when I put my hands in it, it felt like jello. And as I was trying to work it through my hair, it would just fall apart. The pros of it was that it did make my hair a lot looser. I did think it was easier to manage my hair once I got it working in. That is the pros of it. But again, I just didn't like how it wasn't it wasn't as easy for me to work through my hair as something like Cantu or Eden Body Works in and what I'm currently using Cream of Nature um Argan Oil. So that's my pros and cons of Shea Moisture. But I remember last year, Shea Moisture did a commercial where there was this black woman who felt as if, you know, the ethnic care hair section or the hair care section is segregated because, you know, we have an ethnic hair care section for curly and very tightly curled hair. And then we have the general section for girls with straight to wavy hair, the white girls or the non-black girls. So then it was basically Shea Moisture saying, hey, we got to integrate. Okay, we don't want to be in these nasty ethnic hair care sections. You know, we want to be with the white people. And a lot of people were upset because Shea Moisture used to be a black owned company. I believe in 2015, it was sold to a corporation that was that is owned by Mitt Romney. I don't think Mitt Romney has anything to do with Shea Moisture directly, but it is owned by him. And I, I remember thinking something was up because like I watch a lot of Saran Sensei's video and follow her on Twitter. So um, like, I'm just gonna like, like tell people like what to watch as well. But I wanted to make my own video about like my opinion on it. But I remember her telling me and others that 
shea moisture is just not as good as you think it is so i said okay but that didn't really turn me off from it i just wanted to try it i wanted to see what it was like for my hair like i said i'll probably get it like maybe a 6.5 out of a 10 it's not the best but i do think it works it's just not something that you are comfortable with i, I don't like the texture of it uh, I, I don't think it's as easy as, say, Eden Body Works or Cantu. I know a lot of people don't like Cantu, but I also feel with Cantu, it's a lot of people with loose curls that are using it, putting glops of it in their hair and saying that it's too thick, it dries out their hair when it's not in, it's not intended for that type of hair. Cantu is intended for very tightly coiled hair, maybe 3C, but definitely 4B and 4A, I mean 4C. Um, usually it works wonders for 4B and 4C, but I've heard people with my hair say it's not that good. Um, I do think the old natural does better and I definitely think Eden Body Works does better but again like it's about bu budget now I do like I do like the curl activator that Cantu sells in this cylinder bottle and I think it makes my hair very no moist and I do like the leave-in conditioner the leave-in conditioner definitely makes my hair moist I enjoy it a lot um, I was currently using Bella Curl and although I it, it, it did start to work at first. It kind of was dry and it didn't work as instantly as leave-in. So again, like these are my pros and cons of certain products, but let's talk about Shea Moisture because I want to get this out of the way. So fast forward to yesterday, Shea Moisture did another commercial where you see a black woman with very loose curly hair down to her back saying I was bullied. I had people throw paper wads at my hair and I didn't feel comfortable with my natural hair. And then you see white women with red hair saying I didn't feel good about my hair because my hair is red and you know we we suffer too because we have red hair and we are discriminated against because we are gingers and then there was other white women talking about how I didn't feel comfortable with my hair and now I use shea moisture because it makes me feel included they could have just left it with the black woman honestly like she may have like 3a 3b hair but it was one thing to have that black woman, fine. But to have white women that don't have our hair type talking about how they were discriminated against because of their hair, that they were made to feel ugly, absolutely not. Um, with the redhead thing, I understand historically people with red head or red hair have been discriminated against or considered ugly. Um, I understand how like a lot of women are treated with red hair. I understand that part. I'm not someone that's like, oh, you know, like red hair is ugly. I always thought red hair was pretty. I always liked it, especially Titanic, one of my favorite movies, um, Kate Winslet. So I do have a soft spot towards women with red hair, like pale women with red hair for some reason. Don't ask why. Well, I actually already explained it to you. But I understand, like, feeling like you don't belong because of the color of your hair. I understand, like, the blonde, brunette, red hair thing. I understand. But what does that have to do with your hair texture? That's what I want to know. What does that have to do with the fact that you do not have a hair texture that is intended for shea moisture? Shea moisture was originally intended for women with 4B to 4C hair. When women were starting to go natural, women with my hair were really flocking to Shea Moisture. Shea Moisture was a hood-ass product. So by this Nigerian man who got his recipe from his grandma. So basically, it just looks as if these white people are exploiting off of an age-old recipe from a black woman, of course. A woman of African descent. And... I follow this other woman, Raquel Savage, Raquel underscore Savage at, on Twitter. And she said she went to model for Shea Moisture. And when she asked about why there weren't any women of color on the panel, people were very rude to her. Um, they wouldn't give her any free products. Um, you can look at the thread because I had retweeted it um, and you can follow her. But she said that they were very rude to her. And they said, Shea Moisture is for everyone. And she said, I thought this was a black hair care 
company. And they said, well, the recipe is made by black people. It comes from families, like generations of families that made recipes for our skin and hair. But it's not just for you. And I think it was a white woman that said it. And what made me think was, well, yeah, black people created all of this. They did all the hard work, but we're not going to have you niggers just have it, okay? Like, if you make something too good, then we can all have it. That's what it sounds like to me. Like, now white women realize that Shea Moisture is too good. Now, like, they need Shea Moisture, even though they don't need it. It doesn't make any sense. And I was angry initially from last year because I'm sick of these black-owned companies that have a niche Nietzsche, Nietzsche, I was pronouncing it like the philosopher. <laughs> they have a niche audience where it's primarily black women that go out and buy it. So now they want to market to white women, even though they don't need it. They just want more money. They want to say, hey, you know, it's not just for these black bitches. It's for you, too. And it's like we want to make all women feel included and feel beautiful and absolutely not, because when you grow up like me, who has body dysmorphia, who has all like I, I can't give away all my disabilities, but someone like that just did not feel good about herself because of multiple things that she identified with. I don't like it when people try to undermine my experiences as a black girl. I don't like it when people try to make it feel like, well, there are other people suffering, even though these people have historically put me down or made me feel as if I was low. That's what I don't understand. Don't undermine it. Don't undermine my experience. And this happens so many times where I talk about colorism or when I talk about anti-black beauty standards and people either look at me and say, well, get over it, you know, you're on your own. Or they'll say something condescending where they think it's a compliment, but they're basically telling me to shut up. Like, oh, but you're so pretty. I think you're pretty. But really what they are saying is, okay, I think you're pretty. So shut the fuck up, black bitch. You're a, you're a conceited ass shallow hole. And all you need is a compliment to make yourself feel better. And it's ignorant because it's more than just wanting to feel pretty. But to basically undermine the experience of black women, especially black women with 4C hair, to say, well, we want to make all women feel beautiful, even though these women made you feel ugly by making fun of your hair, saying that they have good hair. You know, it just did not make any sense to me. Um, I did not approve of the first commercial, and I definitely do not approve of the second commercial Shea Moisture is definitely canceled. I will never buy from them again because, like I said, it didn't really work for my hair as much as I wanted it to. And to make matters worse, when Tariq Nasheed decided to weigh in on this, he is a black man who is pretty much like a Tommy Sotomayor light who said, well, I don't understand why these black bitches are suing Shea Moisture when a lot of these companies are anti-black, but you want to... Um, sue a black company because they want to market to white women here's what i don't understand how are you a black man that doesn't even use black hair care products going to police what black women buy and support this is what so many women have said yesterday that it's just about black women saying no and dismantling their loyalty to someone that doesn't care about them just like when black women say i'm through with black men or i'm through with black men who are abusive and treat us like shit then people want to beg us to go back to them it's like it's like an abusive relationship the apology with shea moisture shows it the apology with shea moisture saying you know we can explain you know we made a mistake and we will never hurt you black women you know we love you you know we understand what you do for us and we understand that you have been our supporters for years which aka yes we understand that you give us money we understand that we need you so we're just going to keep pissing you off but then making it feel as if we love you it's an abusive relationship it's making people feel guilty and unfortunately there will be some black women who will take that apology and we'll run with it and we'll keep buying from that shitty ass product line. It's anti-black, it's texturous, it makes you feel bad about the fact that you don't have loose curly hair. It's on the vein of Carol's daughter, even Miss Jessie, even though like one of the co-founders of Miss Jessie's passed away about a couple years ago from suicide, like, you know, RIP to her. But like all of those products 
have been made to make women with very nappy hair feel bad about their hair because they don't have the right type of natural hair texture. And it's very sad. As someone who has been in situations where people clearly did not want me to have natural hair, clearly wanted me to straighten my hair, it's very unfortunate. Especially when I first started going natural or when girls would see me with my natural hair and it wouldn't look in the best shape, they would come up to me like, oh, I could straighten it. I could straighten it. But they wouldn't actually give me advice on how to take care of it. They wouldn't show me how to to twist my hair or they wouldn't show me how to put products in my hair they would just offer to straighten it they wouldn't really want to do anything to my hair because they didn't want me to have natural hair they didn't want my hair to grow long they just wanted me to have straight hair they wanted me to have hair that was not natural like they would make me feel as if there was something wrong with my hair instead of just saying here's how you should take care of your hair um here's how you should detangle like they wouldn't they wouldn't teach me how to detangle if it were detangled or if it were matted, or I'm sorry, if it were matted, or if it were shaped a certain way, they wouldn't want to fix it, okay? They would just tell me like, oh, well, just straighten it, or they'll like try to like yank it out, or do something like, they wouldn't do it the proper way. They would just yank it out, or like try to mess it up on purpose. Like I've been in situations where people have tried to mess up my hair on purpose, and you don't understand what it's like to have a hair texture, a hair type where people deliberately want to risk damaging your hair you will tell them I don't want heat put on my hair but they will insist and try to like put something in lighter terms just so you could like um just so you could like get your hair straightened and heat damaged so so I wouldn't support Shea Moisture I wouldn't do it um but with Tariq Nasheed he basically said some the um some derogatory comments towards black women about Shea Moisture. Shea Moisture added him and said, we love people like you that support us. Now, you know, they had to have seen all of that dread to have commented because they put a little winky smiley face. And now they, now they trying to backtrack like you knew what you were doing when you did that. So it's like you're shooting yourself in the foot. And then the funny part is, since Tariq is supporting Shea Moisture, the white people that they want to market don't want to ship don't want to support Shea Moisture because they believe that Tariq Nasheed is racist against white people. <laughs> oh my god, like fuck you, Shea Moisture. Like fuck out of here. Like <laughs> um next is the appropriation of black culture in retail. As I said, I got my headscarf from H&M because where I'm from, H&M is like the only hot store here. Like there's no Forever 21. There's no Macy's. Like if you want to go somewhere like a Forever 21 or Macy's or like a high fashion outlet, you would have to go to Louisville. Here it's just H&M, JCPenney's. They used to have Body Central, but then they closed that down for an H&M, which I don't understand. I actually liked Body Central. If you remember like Body Central, like the little store at the mall. I used to go there all the time. I used to shop at JCPenney's when I was in like middle school, but now I'm 23. But there was another... Okay, this is much better. Um, just the other day, um, as I was saying about the whole Shea Moisture thing, so there is another issue where a store is promoting their products with, you are the woo to my tang, H to the Izzo, P to the Iza, um, like pizza, and what else they are saying, you know, like, I love gangster rap. So it's basically an appropriation of African-American culture. They are appropriating hip-hop culture for little white girls to feel cool and edgy and to wear cool shirts, you know, for an aesthetic. And I wanted to say this. I'm sick of people appropriating something that they don't understand, something that they mock, something that they stigmatize. For years, I felt as if I couldn't be myself when it came to that stuff. I would be ashamed at the clothes that my dad would buy. My dad used to buy me baby fat all the time. He used to buy me stuff from a Kimora Lee, FUBU. He would buy me clothes that had like Soldier Boy on it, like just very urban clothes from retail stores because they used to have a lot of that. I wouldn't wear them because I didn't want to get made fun of for being ghetto. 
I really did. I wanted to fit in with the white kids so bad because they would go to Hollister, Abercrombie, even Aeropostale. I wouldn't wear them because I felt bad I fe because I knew I knew the type of stigma that those clothes carried. Now to see people today wanting to embrace it because now we finally stopped being self-haters and we stopped lo we started loving ourselves. Now that we made it okay, now that we had to make what was called ugly and ignorant for years, now that we finally accepted it, now everyone wants to take something from us, something that we finally embraced. Like now, oh, okay, since you know you're comfortable now, we can like join in. Like, no, it doesn't work that way. Like, I'm sick of people trying to make something that you know was stigmatized into something cool. And instead of letting black people just embrace it and like make it mainstream, you make white people make it mainstream. Like with the Kardashians with their shapes. For years, I was made fun because I had a fat ass. People at school would make me feel as if I was inappropriate when I would wear shorts down to my knees. People would sit there and send me home or tell me I needed to go change. After warning me not to wear it again, they would tell me, don't wear the shorts again. So I would say, okay, I won't. But then they would have such a problem with it and they would put me aside and say, um, like, we, we just really don't feel comfortable with those shorts on you. Um, can you go home and change? I remember freshman year of high school when I wore shorts that were not short at all. I was made to wear these ugly gym shorts because they didn't like the fact that I had a certain shape. When I was at swim class, these girls that was trying to be cool have said I had a ghetto booty. I did not like to be called that. So then to see white women uh, make something that y'all made fun of for years cool because now it's on white skin. It's on paler skin. It's on lighter skin. So now it's beautiful. It's not beautiful when it's on dark skin or brown skin, you know. Now that these pure, precious white women are making something sexy into something pure or something sexually deviant into something pure and innocent, now we can say big butts are a signifier of beauty absolutely not so how i feel about this retail issue where people want to appropriate a certain culture i'm not with it i will never be with it because it's stupid it's racist it's anti-black it's anti-african-american i don't like it i will never wear something like that like i remember when beyonce came out in 2013 her album her self-titled album she had this line, of course, flawless, um, I woke up like this. So then there was a lot of t-shirts so sold at Walmart, sold at places where it said, I woke up like this, um, with the T-H-I-S stylized as D-I-S. And it was a bunch of white women, like, just getting off on, like, something that was supposed to be a womanist anthem, like, supposed to make black women feel beautiful at the fact that they are natural, like, they woke up like this. So you have, like, a lot of non-black women just appropriating something that was not meant for them. Like, the self-titled album was, like, a predecessor towards Beyonce's Lemonade album, like, her feminism album. And so many people were appropriating that and putting like Beyonce quotes onto their shirts for stores that they know are sold to white people. Like they know black people aren't really going into a place like American Eagle or a place where they have a lot of white girls modeling. You know, they'll probably go somewhere like a fucking hot topic. I see more black people going to hot topic than those places, including I myself, because I would go in there to buy like a Drake t-shirt or a band t-shirt like the Beatles, Bob Dylan, Wu-Tang Clan. Like Hot Topic is not a scary ass place. Like a lot of people say, oh, it's scary and gothic, but that's the place where I actually felt the most welcomed in. Like a Hot Topic of all places or Spencer's. Like I was going into those places, but a place like fucking Forever 21, and I love Forever 21. Like I buy clothes from there and I like H&M. I, I do shop at H&M and Forever 21. I just don't like the appropriation. So it needs to stop. And we need to really have black fashion designers again. We need someone like Kamora Lee back who can make clothes for black women of a certain size. Because Kamora Lee may be biracial. She's half Korean or is, is she half Korean or half Japanese? I think she's half Japanese, maybe. But one of the, one of the two, I believe. But even though she is a skinny 
visibly East Asian woman. Um, she made sure to make clothes for black girls and their size. Like every time I wore something from Kimora Lee, it fit. You know, baby fat was the jeans that really shaped your body. You know, it showed your big butt. You know, it, it didn't make girls feel ashamed of themselves. You know, so many girls, dark skin, light skin, wore baby fat. We need someone like her again. We need fashion designers that can make black culture cool, but for black people. Like even with black Greek culture, you know, we need like t-shirts that, you know, say straight out of this and straight out of that. And I've seen it, you know, I don't like it when non-black people, non-black Greeks appropriate that and say like things that are clearly an appropriation of black culture or black Greek culture. So I want to talk about that, how you see a lot of, cause you know, there's probates and there's even skit shows that I believe the white sororities do. And a lot of them do appropriate black culture or black Greeks and will do things that black Greeks would not be able to get away with. And I feel like we need to just make it cool again for us. We need to have our own fashion company. We need to have another food. We need to have another baby fat. We do. Um, that's all I have to say for now because this video is going on about 30 minutes. So I want everyone to have a lovely day. Bye.